Hello, it is Jack Gill and welcome to Redmen Academy. I'm joined by James again for today's video. Right. Um, just just a simple one for today. We're just going to have a chat. We, I realise due to all this madness going on at the minute, me and James haven't really been able to have a proper chat yet about Neil Critchley and the whole situation. Obviously, James, I did a quick video after um, Neil Critchley departed. It came as a shock. I, I tweeted the original news story about him being linked with the job and then yeah. Liverpool's official page literally a minute later announced that he had left to join Blackpool. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, obviously, people have probably watched my opinion on it straight after. Um, if not, go over and, and, and do watch the video. Um, but it, it was a shock at the time, but I think it's such a good move for Critchley, isn't it, James? Yeah, it's probably the best, one of the best sort of jobs to go into as like you know a first time senior manager really because there's not much pressure on him because Grayson didn't go out in sort of the best way possible that he it takes the pressure off whoever comes in next because he set the bar quite low no offense to Simon Grayson but they were in quite a bad run of form weren't they as far as I believe and uh, he's oh well, I think when he left they were weren't doing too well they were they'd been in a bit of a bad run of form. I think Grayson in the last few years as well, when he was at Sunderland, he, he weren't doing too particularly well. Yeah. Uh, and I think Blackpool were pushing for promotion. They're under the new owners now, and mm -hmm. and that's what the direction they wanted to go in. The the thing I noticed, James, was the interesting thing about the appointment is I think it's perfectly suited for Neil Christian Blackpool yeah. job because you, you see with with Blackpool and their new owners, they like loan deals. They they, they don't want to splash the cash. They they love a loan. And for Neil Critchley to have that experience in the under twenty threes league, it is it, just perfect for them. You know, we've got a few lads as well who we've, we've been talking about. You know, the last week or so, who would be perfect to go to like a League One or lower Championship team. And who better to be coached by than someone who knows them? You know, from a very young age, we've got you know we've got like the likes of you know Nico Williams who could go to the Championship or you know, a few other lads too who will benefit from senior football before they sort of fully get into the under-23 side or even into the first team. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, obviously, he hasn't got off to the greatest start so far, Neil Critchley. But obviously, James, these things do date, take time and it's his first big managerial job. Um, but at the end of the day, James, it shows once again, we've spoke about it constantly this season so far, that people can criticise us all they want when we play um, a, a youthful side in, in yeah. the FA Cup and in the Carabao Cup. I know in, in that semi-final against Aston Villa, we didn't really have much choice with, the first, with having to play two games in, in, in 24 hours, really. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I think Neil Critchley, of course, has been... Uh, has shown that actually the positive signs of that and we've seen from Curtis Jones he's been another positive obviously he's had his Premier League debut this season he's constantly in and around the first team we've seen with Harvey Elliott and Neko Williams they're now players that a lot of Liverpool fans are, are keeping their eyes on um, but it also shows that from a managerial perspective as well Neil Critchley has put himself in the uh, in the in the shop window mm -hmm. and he's been snapped up yeah when I had a little read about him just after he left I saw that he's one of the only 16 coaches worldwide to have the UEFA elite badge. Yep. He was handpicked by the FA to represent England at this, you know, coaching sort of setup thing, the new thing, wasn't it? And it sort of shows that he is seen in the coaching world. He's one of the top coaches in Europe. I think he's only in his early 40s as well, isn't he? Yeah. So he, they clearly yeah. see that he is capable of being at the very, very top. So it can understand why he would want to sort of leave academy football and make a name for himself. Even if it doesn't work out, he's got that on his resume, hasn't he? Where he's got into a job where you know, the expectations aren't too high and he's going to be able to bring in players that he knows and he knows he can work with as well. Absolutely. And listen, he's a, he's a brilliant man as well that I've, I've been, I know we've both been able to talk to him this season. One of one of them's on the YouTube channel as well. Check that one out. Um, but he's, he's just absolutely super, very down to earth. And, and you can see why we've got such a good youth system and, and good youth players at the minute because he, he is a quality manager and I said at the time I wish him all the best at Blackpool um, and it'll be interesting to keep an eye on that as well and we'll be talking yeah. throughout the summer and, and throughout the next few um, months hopefully that let's say uh, this coronavirus goes away um, sooner rather than later um, but yeah we'll be talking about obviously low moves maybe I, I, I think there'll be a lot in the in the papers about um, Blackpool uh, being linked with our, our young players James. 
I mean, yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it, really? You know, it, if there's any club they're going to go to now, it's a local club too. So if anything, you know, any little injuries or niggles, they can always come back to the new training complex, which will be hopefully ready now this summer. We spoke, yesterday about, we spoke yesterday about Ben Woodburn. Yeah. It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It'd be a really good environment for him yeah. too. Because they do seem to want to play attacking football and he will thrive in a system, especially under Neil Critchley too. I know there's been times where we have criticised or I have criticised Neil Critchley because there are he seems to go missing sometimes when the games get away from him. But you forget that he's always seemed to have been working with a half-full squad or with the reserve lads who have just stepped up to his team and he's never been able to really have a full-strength eleven. very rarely, has he? That, that's the thing. I think under-23s managers really have it quite difficult because yeah. the next players can be poached by the, the, the first team uh, and then they've got to work around what they've got. Obviously, a lot of the time as well, they probably don't know until a couple of days before that they're not going to be out without the star man. And as you say, for the, a lot of the season, he was without Brewster, he was without Curtis Jones, he was having to play the Bucci through the middle because he didn't really have anyone else. Um, it, it, was, it was definitely a difficult job for yeah. Neil Quigley and he still continued to do... Uh, everything he could really, and as you say, you saw how professional he was. Um, his press conference in his press conferences pre Villa, pre Shrewsbury, yeah. and listen, Blackpool have taken a gamble, but as you say, he's shown himself. Um, he's got a record himself, which, which shows that he absolutely deserves yeah. opportunity, and and I hope he, he does really well there. But but to look ahead, to look at where we go, uh, which direction we go uh, post Neil Critchley. Um, we're, we've picked out a few names, obviously. We've gone through uh, the odds on what the bookies think and there's some weird names in there. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is 500 to 1. <laughs> James Pierce is 500 to 1. Uh, that that would be very interesting. I saw Paul that'd be, that'd be a brilliant point, there as well. and uh, so, Some crazy names in, in there, but yeah, I'd love James Pierce to take over that role. Would, would you? Oh, that would be incredible. Absolutely. It brings so much knowledge to the team. Oh, it, it would be incredible. I, I, I think they should do it just for a season. Just have James Pearce. Yeah. Just just go for it. Now, nah, we're, we're only joking, of course. Um, you've got, obviously, Stephen Gerrard, which I think is the shock one. Um, obviously, he left the under-18s for Rangers. He's got some good experience. He's doing brilliant things with Rangers in Europe. Um, I know the further they've gone in Europe, the more slip-ups they've had. In, in the league yeah. um, but at times you do have to pick one or the other and it just so happens that the Rangers are on the best European run for a very long time um, that they've slipped up in, uh, in the league at the same in the yeah. same period um, but it, it would be odd for Steven Gerrard to come back into the under 23s role with the games I but I can't really see it happen myself I don't be, know why it is a step down you know there's no way of looking at it where you see it as a step up because Klopp's going to be here for at least another I think three years so he's not going to want to do again academy football for three more years when he went from under 18s to arguably, you know, and I say it's with a pinch of salt, the biggest team in Scotland. I don't want to offend any Celtic fans there, but, you know, they are European heritage, aren't they? He's not going to go back to under 23 football, I think. You're um, going to get a lot of angry uh, Celtic <laughs> fans in the, in the comments now, James. I know. Um, but, but, yeah. I completely agree with you. I, I think it would be a very strange move for Gerald to come back into the under 23s. Um, as you say, uh, I think if that is to happen, it's his way of working more with Jurgen Klopp. It's more his way of. Uh, I, I think it'd be more a sign that he definitely will take from take over from Jurgen Klopp when he does leave the club. Um, for me, uh, the bookies' favourite now and uh, my favourite, I said straight away, um, would be Barry Lutus. Um, yeah. I think. He, absolutely deserve it when Gerard left the under 18s he stepped up from the under 16s level um and uh of course we've we've seen that he's done a brilliant job there with the under 18s it would also provide the perfect bridge for for players like Billy Cometio to get more minutes uh, with the under 23s and we've we've seen loads this season as more youth players have, have stepped up to first team level um Critch has had to use some of them under 18s lads and, and Lutus even said himself he, he's worked before with a lot of the under 23s he's worked with Curtis Jones he's worked with a lot of them players and and you know even when you look at the under 19s uh, games in the champions in, in in the UEFA youth league um I think he's he's been obviously shown he's, he can he can work well with them lads and we did really well in that competition too I know we didn't go to far um, but we, we did well and, and at times when obviously uh, some of our key players were with the first team on, on the same nights of those games and we still came away having put in a good performance I think he's as very well good coach. very good he, coach. Is, yeah, he, he speaks in a similar way to Neil Critchley as well you can see that they 
clearly work together at times and they share similar ideas because the way they talk about how they want their teams to play almost echoes what the other one's saying. So it, it makes sense to have him take his place because there shouldn't be that sort of transitional period that you see in professional football because they obviously know the same players too. It makes perfect sense to me rather than bring in someone from the outside. I'm, I'm sure it's something that Liverpool are, are using as well this period of time to to take a look at. But as I say, I, I I'm not particularly a betting man, but I would put money on on Barry Leeds. I think he would be my definite favourite and I'm, favourite. Sorry, and I know what people are thinking. If that does happen, who will step up to the 18s? And, and me and James obviously had a discussion before going live on this. Obviously, I I've done a bit of refereeing and I'm aware of the Liverpool under the 16 side. I refereed them before against Stoke. Um, and I came across a man called Mike Bridge Waters, um, and I, that is his name, isn't it? I think it is. I've got Mark Bridge. Mark, Mark Bridge. Well, uh, it's quite yeah. a name, isn't it? Mark Bridge Wilkes. So something to do with that. Wilkinson, yeah. Wilkinson. There you go. Um, and he he's, he's a, he looks like a, a good coach. Yeah. Um, he's got the FA Advanced Youth Award. Yep. So he comes very high recommended. I've got here that he arrived to coach the under-13s and 14s from Huddersfield and then stepped up to under-16s to replace Barry Lewis in 2018. And that, that seems to be the thing, doesn't it? When, when someone goes, they step up and, and I hope Liverpool follow the same thing. And it would be interesting to see that. Again, he speaks very well and he's very similar to, to Barry Lewis. It's not, not, not just the fact that, obviously, he's bald, um, but, but they seem to speak well. They obviously... They try and play a similar style all throughout the, the academy and, and it'll be good to see him stepping in into that job as well. And obviously he'll have worked with Barry Luters before, so that's perfect. Um, and we've we've also got um, a, another name, haven't we? Vit, Victor, Victor Jarrett? Victor Pathos. Pathos, yeah. Yeah, he, um, he acts as sort of the uh, bridge between the academy and the first team. So if any lads are going over through training or prepared for the next game, he's the one who tells them what they need to be doing and how they can best sort of integrate into the first team. So but it'd be an interesting appointment that it makes sense on paper, maybe at least even for a season until Barry Lewis is so sort of seen as being ready, because it's only been about 18 months. But I think he has very much a specific role in the first team. So I, it'd be quite an interesting one. I am so glad you taught me how to pronounce that name before everyone shouted at me in the comments again. I'll have Payjack shouting at me again for... for... <laughs> pronunciation of names but but yeah that that one shocked me when we we're looking through the odds because obviously he's he's a name that's I, I believe he's joint favorite with Barry Lutus um I didn't I didn't know he, he was a qualified coach I thought his job was purely you know just just to see see over and and, and no, see he arrived from uh, Porto I believe in the summer and so, sort of the same as how Pep Linders came over he sort of took on a similar role to Pep ah uh, yeah yeah oh, I yeah. I, um, but I, I, I think that's crazy. Me, I, I, as I say, I, I didn't realise it was a coaching role he had. I thought it was more uh, just an overseeing role where he's just looking over. But that would make perfect sense as well. Um, so, so that's also a good thing. But it's definitely something we'll be keeping our eye on yeah. over the next few uh, days and weeks. Uh, James, do you agree with me that you think it'll be Barry Lutus? I think it'll be Barry Lutus, but I think Matos could also make sense. But I don't think the club would want to upset the sort of system they've got in place. He seems to be very good at his job and it's a role that Liverpool seems to want to have. So yeah. have that link between the first team and the 23s. So if he was to go down, then you'd have to just bring someone else in for that role. James, he's been doing two jobs himself. James Pearce, maybe? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. You know, you never know. And 500 smackers back. We'll tag James uh, in this video and then see what he thinks about that. But yeah, yeah. For, um, it, it would be brilliant, wouldn't it? James yeah. Pearce, taken over the under 23s role and there you go but no I, I think that's a highly unlikely thing but that's it for today um that's our our opinions on on barry luters our take on the uh whole departure yeah absolutely Neil Critchley um, leaving, obviously, the club going to Blackpool. Obviously, we don't know what's going on with the rest of the season. We don't know how he'll continue with, with Blackpool, whether they'll finish this season, whether he'll start a new season, whether he'll have a transfer window to get players that he wants. It's all up in the air at the minute. But let us know what you think in the comments, whether you think it'll be Gerard coming back to take over, um, how happy you are for Neil Critchley 
anything you like, just let us know in the comments. Um, but yeah, give us some interesting names to take over. Go on, let's have a laugh. Um, we've spoke James Pierce a lot, but maybe me and James can take over the reins uh, at the end of the 20 threes. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be up for that. Let's go. Let's uh, get our badges and then go with that. Um, but yeah, cheers for today and we'll be back tomorrow with another video. See you. Bye.